In 2021, 15 different blockchains exceeded $1 billion in total value locked. The early adopters who got into these ecosystems first made considerable amounts of returns. Aurora is built on Neo Protocol's Layer 0 and looks set to become another billion dollar DeFi ecosystem. This video explains the tech, the 800 million incentive program, and I'll demonstrate how and why I'm deploying capital to try Solaris, Aurora's leading decentralized exchange. Good morning, my name is James Puccini, and on this channel I explore new platforms and protocols emerging in the DeFi space. I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. Aurora is built by the same development team that created Near Protocol, and it's a separate blockchain that sits on top of Near Protocol's Layer 0. It's EVM compatible, so it runs the Ethereum virtual machine, and users can port code from Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, and all the other EVM compatible blockchains. This makes it as easy as possible for the developers to deploy DeFi protocols. It has some impressive performance statistics as well, one second block times, two second confirmation times, and three transactions. It feels really weird using MetaMask without paying a transaction fee. I don't think that's sustainable in the long term, and the team has suggested that if they do have to introduce a transaction fee, it will be less than one cent and payable in Ethereum. Both Aurora and Near Protocol have their own native tokens, but for me, I don't think it's the best way to allocate capital because there was a lot of early VC funding and they're sitting on unrealized profits because they bought the tokens at a discount. I wanted to take out a position because I think Aurora is going to grow in terms of TVL over the coming weeks and months. But for me, the native tokens weren't the best way to do that, so I dived into the ecosystem. Over a long enough period of time, tech sectors tend to trend towards monopolies and duopolies. For this reason, I think in DeFi, it's normally a good idea to own the best-in-class asset. If we bring up the stats from DeFi Llama, you can see that TriSolaris has a considerable first mover advantage and way more TVL than anything else on the ecosystem right now. Most of these are decentralized exchanges and is a clear market leader. One of the things that makes me so bullish on this is the $800 million incentive program that Near Protocols announced. We saw in summer with Avalanche how effective this kind of strategy can be for getting the flywheels of DeFi turning in a new ecosystem. It's not entirely clear how this is going to be distributed, but there's grants available for developers. Some of the liquidity pools on TriSolaris have this double reward mechanism of the Aurora token. And a stage is set for this to act like a catalyst and introduce that influx of initial liquidity. Now let's demonstrate the yield farming. TriSolaris has a native Tri token and that makes up the bulk of the rewards for these farms. As you can see, there's a number of options. I decided on the USDC, USDT pair for the test because I think that's going to be the most popular pool which will attract the most liquidity because people are looking for returns on their stable coins right now. So the first thing I did was transfer $50 worth of USDC or USD Circle from Binance Smart Chain over to Aurora. I ended up with $49.05 on Aurora, so it was just under $1 transaction fee. It's quite a lot in the percentage terms, but I think that's just because it was such a low amount. Later on, I bridged some funds across from Ethereum using the Rainbow Bridge, which is actually developed by the Near Protocol team, and that worked really well as well. After about 10 minutes, the transfer went through and the funds were added to MetaMask. I had to add the network for Aurora to MetaMask, and that was done by the Trio Solaris website. I then exchanged $24 worth of USDC to USDT. This is just transferring two stable coins so I can participate in the pool. I want to add both sides of the liquidity. You might think, why is this idiot buying 50 cents worth of Ethereum? And the method behind the madness here is that if they do introduce fees, it's going to be in Ethereum, so I want to have a little bit in my wallet just to pay the transaction fees, which are only meant to be one cent per transaction, so that's plenty. I then add the liquidity to the liquidity pool. And it's all pretty standard stuff here. Connect wallet, click button, confirm transaction. Once I had my LP tokens, which act as a receipt for me providing liquidity, I can then stake them on the farms. This gives me two sets of rewards. It gives me both the transaction fees from the liquidity pool, and I'm getting a try governance token on top of that. Here's a complete list of the liquidity pools that are getting an allocation of the governance token. And that's either because they're deemed to have a more high risk asset, or there's a greater chance of impermanent loss. Another thing that I think is worth keeping an eye on as this all evolves is Nearpad. It's a launchpad product similar to like Soulstarter or Polka Starter. Obviously, the industry is evolving and VCs are now picking off the best deals. But I think something like this gives individual investors the chance to get in at the very earliest stages of a token launch, where it's the highest risk and the highest reward. One thing I didn't mention when we were looking at the yield farming on TriSolaris is that the rewards aren't auto compounding. You're going to have to claim your Tri governance tokens and then you can either put them into a single sided staking vault or you can swap them on exchange and add more liquidity. I hope that you found this interesting. If you like exploring new DeFi protocols, then consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and thank you for making it to the end.